So before we can really get into a discussion of urban, rural, and suburban communities, I want to cover uh, the basics of demography. Demography is the study of the size and composition of human populations. Sociologists who are demographers are very interested in counting people. How many people are moving, how many people are being born, how many people die. And that goes to the three major elements of demography. So demography covers three areas, fertility, mortality, and migration. There are only three things that can happen to change the size and the composition of a population. People either move through migration, they die through mortality, or they're born through fertility. Those are the only three things that can affect um, the size and composition of a population. So let's go over what each of them are. Fertility is the number of births in a given population. And obviously things like family planning and birth control can affect that. The value of children can affect fertility. Um, all of those things can work together. Mortality is the frequency of death. Mortality is very important in part because mortality, and, and in particular infant mortality, which is the number of infants who die within the first year of life, gives us a really good sense of the overall health of the, of the society. Not just the physical health of people, but the economic well-being of that society, the political well-being of that society. When we see high infant mortality rates, it's generally a sign that there's something wrong. Maybe there's a famine, maybe there's war, maybe there's some sort of economic crisis that's leading to these uh, increases in infant deaths. The other element of mortality is life expectancy, and that's how long a person can be expected to live. That's in the high 70s for men in this country, I wanna say about 77, and it's about 80 for women, although in the last few years it has gone down. So in the US, we are experiencing a decrease in life expectancy, and, and that has partly been driven by the opioid epidemic, and an increase in suicides for people who are middle aged particularly middle aged less educated whites have experienced higher numbers of, um, well, higher than in the past, numbers of suicides and overdoses. Uh, other groups are still facing the crisis as well, and they're actually, their life expectancy is lower, but whites in particular seem to be declining in life expectancy. We will also expect to see an interesting shift from this pandemic depending on how many people die, and that may affect life expectancy as well. I don't know how dramatically, um, but this is something that we'll be thinking about, right, as it changes the size and composition of our population. It's a really sobering thought. Um, migration is the movement of people. So when people are migrating, they're moving. Uh, they might be moving from state to state. They might be just getting in their car and driving in the morning. Even rush hour is an example of migration. Most people, when they're talking about, about migration, they're usually talking about international migration, immigrating from one country to another. And that is a significant um, issue that demographers will talk about. And there are two types of migration, voluntary and involuntary. Voluntary migration occurs when people choose to move of their own free will. Involuntary is when they're forced to move. Maybe they're forced to move because of a war. Maybe they're forced to move because of a natural disaster or famine or something like that. Those would be examples. Refugees are, are generally examples of people who are involuntary migrants. Now, climate change is, is going to be another factor in that too. There's increasingly a lot of discussion about how climate change will create what we're gonna call climate refugees, people who are moving away from coastlines, for example, because the water is getting higher and higher and they're no longer able to live there. All of this leads to some very interesting questions. Demographers are very interested in overpopulation, and overconsumption. So in other words, they want to know, you know, are we are there too many people and are we using too many resources? So let me read these definitions to you. Overpopulation occurs when there are too many people in the population to be supported by that particular environment. 
So when we have overpopulation of people, people are crowded into very small places. It increases the risk of disease. It increases the risk of starvation. So many people in, in very, very crowded areas, they're not gonna be able to get enough to eat. The probability that some disease might come through would be higher. Um, so we need to make sure that we keep that balance, right? Where we don't have so many people that they cannot be supported by the environment. Many people think that the world is, is heading towards overpopulation of people. And they've promoted things like uh, declining birth rates and birth control and things like that because they feel that, you know, as people started to live longer and longer, they could no longer have four, five, six kids. And the wor world's population has exploded dramatically. The other thing though, that's equally important is overconsumption. Are people using the earth's resources faster than those resources can replicate? If we are over consuming, we are using things like oil or natural gas or water in ways that are not sustainable. To be sustainable means we're gonna maintain it, right? But if we use these resources faster than they can be replicated, or we use these resources in ways that creates pollution, it becomes detrimental to the environment and also detrimental to us. I, I had a conversation with my son the other day. I said, the planet's probably gonna go on, but the question is, will the planet be in a condition where we can survive? If we overconsume, if we deplete these resources, if we create pollution, um, if we have this massive global climate change, then we're gonna see uh, tremendous uh, problems for the human race. And it's kind of interesting as, as much as the coronavirus pandemic is very scary to people and we've had um, thousands of people die. I mean, we still have a world with billions and billions of people. But one of the interesting things that is happening is with the decline in economic manufacturing um, and the decline in people being on the road and people sort of sheltering in their homes, we have seen a dramatic decrease in the amount of pollution, air pollution in particular. And so it's kind of interesting. Hum as humans, we're at this... Um, place where we want to encourage economic growth and capitalism and development because you know we are innovating and creating new things at the same time there seems to be a cost on the environment and something very dramatic like this is sort of shutting down the environment or shutting down the the industry and it's having sort of a positive impact on the environment it's it's a interesting trade-off not and i'm not saying that's good or bad but I'm just pointing out that that seems to be happening. Let's talk just a little bit more. I wanna go over this and I'm gonna read from my list here of the primary outcomes that occur when we have overpopulation, too many people, or overconsumption, people using too many resources. One would be poverty, too many people, not enough food, not enough housing, um, overconsumption can also create that. If you strip the land of all its nutrients by over farming it, people are gonna starve, they're gonna be poor, they're not gonna make a living. So starvation and hunger is another factor. Health problems and diseases, which I already mentioned, it also creates wars and conflict, conflict over territory, conflict over water. And the last one, which I already mentioned as well, was environmental destruction. So again, demographers are gonna study these three elements, fertility, mortality, and migration, and they're gonna be very interested in what happens if we don't maintain a balance of the population, if we have too many people, or, or for that matter, too few people, um, what will happen? We, we aim to have sustainability and equilibrium where we're not using the Earth's resources faster than they replicate, where we're not polluting the Earth to the point that it's uninhabitable for us. And those are some of the central questions that we have uh, uh, in this time.